So I was sitting at dinner with a friend of mine like a week, week and a half ago, and he was with his girlfriend, and he has been doing the keto diet, but she had not been. And she's like, well, I really want to do the keto diet, but I'm afraid that when I come off of it, I'm going to just balloon up. And it got me thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, that's actually a great video idea because that's a common concern. It's like, you go on the ketogenic diet and you drop a lot of water because of the carbohydrates that are out of your system. So you lean out, but you also lose water weight. So it's a common concern that when you have carbs again, then all of a sudden you're going to balloon up and you're going to just bloat. Very, very valid concern. And there's some ways that you can combat it. So I've put together this video that gives you some simple ways to make sure that you don't fat rebound, but also don't balloon back up if you do have carbs. But let me first off say that quite frankly, it's not as extreme as you think. You know, you might gain back two or three pounds of water, but it's usually gonna be intracellular and you're not gonna get puffy. It's gonna go right into your muscles. But that being said, I still wanna help people out. So let's go ahead and let's dive into this video. But first, you are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. We have new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, but a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Now, you're gonna see that there's a little bell icon uh, on your screen. That bell icon is gonna allow you to turn on notifications, and it's very important you turn that on because those notifications make it so you know whenever I go live or whenever I post a new video. So make sure you turn those on. Let's go ahead and let's drop in to tip number one. This first tip is actually quite obvious. It's gonna to be to consume more protein. Now normally, I'm not the biggest advocate for consuming large amounts of protein, but when you come off of a ketogenic diet, you wanna be replacing your calories with something. And it's better to replace them with protein than it is with carbohydrates. What this is gonna do is it's first, it's gonna give you a little bit of a barrier. It's gonna give you a little bit of a buffer so you don't immediately go back to carbs and have this crazy insulin glucose spike that's gonna make you wanna devour everything in your house. It's gonna make it a little bit easier. But also, there's a huge thermic effect of protein. Just consuming protein alone is going to end up utilizing 30% of the calories from said protein. So it takes 30% of the calories from the protein you're eating just to digest the protein. That's a great metabolic effect, thermic effect right there. But also, it's going to improve your lean body mass. And when you're coming off the ketogenic diet, it's a great time to actually add some muscle mass because you're hyperinsulin sensitive. So you might as well have some protein and build some muscle in the process because muscle is what drives our metabolism. More muscle equals less fat. It means more calories burned just at rest. Okay, additionally, protein has some really powerful processes when it comes down to increasing what's called GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1, but it also improves cholecystokinin, but it also does some other things in terms of reducing ghrelin levels. So it modulates your hunger pretty dramatically. So this is really cool when you're coming off of a keto diet, something simple that you can do. Next up is now is your time to do a lot more in the way of high intensity interval training and weight training, especially if you weren't doing it before. Because what's gonna happen is if you weren't doing it before, when you go into high intensity interval training or weight training now, you're gonna be a lot more sensitive to the process of it. Now, high intensity interval training and weight training, it utilizes carbohydrates as its fuel source. Even when you're on the ketogenic diet and you're doing it, your body is finding ways to make carbohydrates from other substrates. So it never changes the fact that HIT and weight training uses carbs. Okay, so when you come back off of keto and you go back onto eating carbs, you wanna find ways to incinerate those carbs as fast as you can. And HIT is a phenomenal way to do so. Plus, you have a very powerful metabolic effect that occurs when you start going on to HIT. In fact, there's a study that's published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. Okay, they took a look at test subjects that were gonna do 30 minutes of steady state cardio versus 30 minutes of high intensity interval training. So one group did 70% uh, of their VO2 max at a steady state for 30 minutes. Another group did 30 minutes with one minute on at 105% of their VO2 max and two minutes off. Okay, that's a long rest period, not a whole lot of overall activity. Well, not only did the high intensity interval group burn more calories during the workout, they ended up having a much higher EPOC, which basically is their uh, exercise post-oxygen consumption. So they ended up burning 69 more calories over the next couple of hours than the group that did not do the hit. So we have that metabolic benefit that's really great too, but most importantly, we just wanna incinerate those carbs as much as we can so we don't have that high glucose level. Next is start taking chromium. Okay, chromium is a very, very, very inexpensive supplement. It's just a trace mineral. It's just a mineral that you can get on Amazon for literally like two bucks. It's not one of those things that's gonna be, uh, you have to pay too much attention to the actual quality of it. It's a very simple mineral. So just pick a cheap one up. Okay, chromium does some really powerful things. What chromium does is it activates what is called GLUT4. So here's your cell. Inside your cell, you have GLUT4. Okay, GLUT4 just stays dormant in your cell until it's acted upon by chromium. Chromium, takes GLUT4 and puts it out to the outside of the cell. 
And then what happens is GLUT4 basically catches blood glucose that's flowing through and pulls it into the cell. So GLUT4 is able to bring down your blood glucose levels and help it actually be utilized within the cell. So by taking GLUT4 from inside the cell to putting it on the outer membrane, we get some really powerful effects. So chromium is going to make it so that you end up having better utilization of the carbohydrates that you just consumed. The other thing is, as a secondary thing, is chromium ends up helping insulin signaling. So what that means is in addition to helping glucose get in because of GLUT4, it also helps insulin sensitivity, which means that your body's going to be able to send more of an insulin signal quicker and sharper to let that glucose in. So basically, it just helps you control your glucose a heck of a lot better. It's very powerful stuff, very important when you're coming off of the keto diet. And you really only need to use it for like the first three or four weeks while you're adjusting back to some carbs. Okay, next up, chia and flax. Okay, full disclaimer, I'm gonna be honest on chia and flax. Don't believe the hype on it being an omega-3 that your body can really utilize. It's alpha linoleic acid, but we're not using it for the omega-3 purposes. I guess my point in saying that is like, it's not beneficial for the omega-3 component. So I'm not saying that, okay? Because that's practically useless. But it's very beneficial, very, very, very beneficial when it comes down to the heavy, heavy soluble fiber component of it. Chia and flax do some really powerful things. And I discovered when I was recently doing a vegan keto diet for a couple of weeks as a challenge, how powerful that stuff was. So because they're so soluble, they draw water to them. And what that means is it also draws a lot of the fat that you've consumed and allows it to come out. So here's what I'm saying. When you come off of a keto diet, the last thing you ever wanna do is be combining fats and carbs, okay? Fats and carbs together trigger an insulin spike that causes you to store the fat you also consumed. So if you're consuming carbohydrates and you're accidentally ingesting some fats along with it, eating some chia seeds or eating some flax is gonna allow that fat to get grabbed and excreted and it's also going to slow down the digestion of the carbohydrates. So it's basically making it so you have a lower insulin response, but you also end up making it so that the fat is leaving your system, therefore reducing the overall calories that are ultimately having a net effect on your body. Plus, you can make some really tasty things. And those of you that know my channel also know that I'm a fan of Thrive Market. There's a special offer down in the description that actually has my chia and flax crackers that are in it. So you can get those in my Thrive box, literally a grocery box that I created with Thrive. And if you don't know what Thrive is, Thrive is literally an online market where you can get things that you would normally get at the grocery store significantly cheaper and delivered right to your doorstep. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you're used to seeing me talk about Thrive Market. If you're new to this channel, then you need to make sure you check them out. But either way, this is a special box that I compiled with all the things that I like the most from Thrive Market, especially when it comes down to keto or transitioning off of keto. So please make sure you take advantage of them down in the description directly below. All right, lastly, I wanna talk about how you can implement fasting strategically when you come off of a keto diet. I personally think that transitioning off of keto lends itself to the perfect opportunity to play with intermittent fasting a little bit. See, intermittent fasting is, first of all, it's gonna give you some flexibility. It's gonna make it so that you can get away with eating a little bit more carbohydrates and have a little bit less of an impact. But the really cool thing is, from an overall fat loss standpoint on the genetic level, it helps the upregulation of what is called the MIR133 gene. I probably just lost a bunch of you, but let me break this down. It changes your genetic structure of your fat. So basically your adipose tissue transitions and turns genetically into basically visceral fat. So don't hear, don't, don't run away yet. Okay, visceral fat's not bad. Okay, it's gonna, I'm gonna make some sense of this. So basically the adipose tissue gets turned into visceral fat. Visceral fat is brown fat that gets burned really quick for energy in this particular case. So what happens is it turns fat that's normally just unsightly and useless into bioavailable fat for energy that your body is going to use first in line. So fasting is a great way to keep your body under control, not just from the calorie standpoint, but also from the genetic level in terms of what it does to your fat. It's actually freaking epic and it's seriously overlooked. Like it literally changes your genetic mechanisms to actually have you burn more fat. No better way to come off of a keto diet and rest assured that you're not gonna balloon back up like my friend's girlfriend thought. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. And please, please, please check out Thrive Market and take advantage of the special offer to get what I would put in my grocery box. I'll see you guys in the next video.